Hey guys, this is Backspace Cadet. Um, I've been getting a lot of requests on how to do rotating cards and or the rotating Paper Mario effect. So I decided to just make a really quick, really easy video. Um, this is how to pull off that effect in the simplest way that I know how. Uh, and it only uses one script. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. I'm just gonna show you what I have here. Um, here are, yeah, just a sprite sheet filled with cards. Um, I got this from the Spriters resource, I believe from the game cards. Um, if you guys don't know the Spriters resource, it's a really cool website where you can basically rip sprites and audio and other various things from real video games. So I did that, um, changed out the color palette for my Backspace Cadet color palette, you know, just to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, nothing too important there. And then here I just have three different cards. Um, for the example purpose of this video. Now two very important things to note whenever you're doing this um, whenever you're doing this rotating effect. One is that you want to have the front and the back of the uh, either card or player whatever you're doing in the animation frames. Um, so yeah, front, back, and then the second important thing you want to make sure that the origin is at the center. Otherwise this specific trick will not work. Um, so yeah, I just have all of these here and again, I'll leave the project file in the description So if you get lost or just want to check it out and don't want to hear me talk go for it uh, Dig into that. So this is the one script that it uses um, only 23 lines and that's also with a bunch of unnecessary um, Blank spots. I could have made that even shorter, but not important. So SCR <laughs> Excuse me SCR card rot which stands for card rotation um, so what we're doing is we're rotating the card. By the way, this is going in the step event of the objects you want this to happen, but I'll show you that later. So there are two different modes. Um, mode 1, grow, and then mode negative 1, shrink. And it's just transitioning back and forth between this. So there are some variables I will show you. And I'll come back to this object. Don't worry, I'm not going to skip over it. Um, there's rot speed, rotation speed, and then rot mode, rotation mode. Um, so, yeah, like I said, there's two modes, one and negative one. That's what these are drawing off of. So if mode equals one, and we want to be growing, we are increasing our image X scale by our rotation speed. While um, this is happening, what we also want to do is um, check and see when we need to change modes. So change the rotation mode. If image X scale is greater than or equal to one, then we're gonna change the rotation mode. Now really quick, I wanna stop and explain to those of you who don't know what image X scale does. Um, so I encourage you to look up the documentation that's very easy to find. If you just look up game maker image underscore X scale, um, it's gonna take you to the documents explaining all of that. But what that changes is the way that the object is being drawn so the X scale specifically, um, that is just how it's being stretched along the X axis. So you're kind of, you can, you know, pull it apart and do all the things. Uh, same, same with Y scale, but you're just doing that along the Y axis. So that's the basics of how that works. Um, look it up if you'd like to know more information. It's all out there. Um, so if our image X scale is greater than one, one being our normal X scale. So for those of you who don't know, your default image X scale and Y scale is always going to be one. Anything less, it's gonna make it smaller. Anything more, it's gonna make it bigger. Two would be double the size, 0.5 would be half the size, etc. Okay, so now that we've detected that, we've changed our rotation mode, we go into the shrink mode or rotation mode negative one. Now this one is only slightly different. So notice we are shrinking the X scale. So we're subtracting instead of adding. Um, and then we're detecting if the image X scale is less than or equal to zero. So zero is going to be invisible. You're not going to be able to see it. Um, so that would kind of be, you know, since cards are very flat, zero would be when you're looking at the thinnest part of it. And it almost looks invisible, but there's just a little hairline of something you can see. Um, so we're changing the rotation mode back to one, you know, similarly to how we did here. But the main difference is here, when this happens, we are changing the frame. So this is going to change it back and forth between the two um, frames of your sprite. And that's how this kind of 
three-dimensional look is um, brought about. I guess I should be careful saying 3D or people <laughs> might be very adamant that it's not 3D. Good thing I've never had that happen before. Um, anyways, moving on. So the card parent, this is basically um, how any object that you want this effect to happen should operate relatively. Um, so in the create event, in all of the objects, the image speed needs to be set to zero. If it's not, it's going to flash and it's going to look really weird. If you want to test it out, change it to one, change it to something, and you'll see what I mean. It's not going to work. The rotation speed, um, yeah, it works best with anything less than 0.1. Obviously, you are not required to do that. If you want to make it 10 million, go crazy. And then the rotation mode, like I mentioned before, it starts out at 1, changes between 1 and negative 1, growing and shrinking. 1 is growing, negative 1 is shrinking. In the step event, we are simply calling the script. For those of you who don't know how to call a script, you just type in the name of the script, open and close bracket, and you don't even, I don't even think you need a semicolon, but we are professional programmers here, people. We're not monsters. And this is just simply, um, since we're doing full screen and we don't have a window, this is just a way to end the game. Now, if you want to customize the objects a little bit more in depth, um, like you saw, if you want to do different rotation speeds, all you have to do, um, set the parent to the card parent. That's going to inherit everything on its own. Um, obviously, you can change the sprite here with different cards. Now, um, you always want to inherit the parent here. And then afterwards, you want to make any changes to what you're inheriting. So we're inheriting these three things here. And then since the change is coming after, that's going to kind of override this. So all we're changing is the rotation speed with each card. And remember, we're doing that after so that that is what finally happens. So this has a different speed than this, which has a different speed than this. Um, very straightforward. I just have a simple room here where they're placed. And yeah, this really, um, in my opinion, is pretty easy to pull off. Although I must say, um, definitely would not seem easy whenever I was a beginner. Um, even just things like this seemed really overwhelming. And uh, yeah, so this is, I guess you could say more of a beginner tutorial. I don't know, maybe there are some veterans out there who have never tried this and just wanted to know a simple way. But yeah, feel free to do whatever you'd like with this. Um, if you guys would like to see this develop further into more of like a Paper Mario style as opposed to the card style, um, let me know. If I get enough requests, I might, you know, consider doing that with animated sprites. And uh, I know a lot of people have requested this specific effect in my 3D videos. Personally, I think that would look really cool in a 3D environment, kind of a paper-esque looking sprite. I think that would be really stylized and cool. Um, but yeah, if you guys uh, like the video, definitely give it a like if you want. Uh, helps me out a lot. Consider subscribing if you want to see more things like this. Uh, yeah, I don't want to sound too biggy, I guess. Uh, but, you know, if you like it, just consider supporting me. Thanks, guys.